All right. We have an audience. All right. <laughs> the team members, members are waiting, confirming we have an audience. Uh, welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining us on a beautiful, dark New England <laughs> wet winter evening. We appreciate it, but welcome to our um, second virtual gathering, let's call it, uh, for the Art Cambridge Street planning process. Um, the last time we had a chance to see everybody was um, virtually, granted, was in December when we had our sort of first um, community planning meeting that went over a lot of existing conditions and data analysis and kind of did a survey of what we've heard to date from folks, whether that was through one-on-one -on -one meetings um, or um, through the survey itself. And we have even more information because we've had a lot more people respond to our survey and we'll go over that a little bit tonight. But this is the first of two workshops that we're gonna be having the next couple of weeks. Tonight's our opportunity to kind of craft a vision for Cambridge Street, we'll talk about what that might be. And then in a couple of weeks, we're gonna talk a little bit more about some of the priorities and possibilities for Cambridge Street. So they kind of have different themes. So Ashley, you can go to the next slide. Um, I, since you were on Zoom, I imagine that most people here know how to use it. So we do want to go over a couple of things. Um, for tonight's meeting, if you can stay muted for right now, that would be great. So we don't have too much background noise. Um, and so once we go to a kind of a, a Q&A portion of this and people are able to comment, at that point, you can unmute. But for right now, if you don't mind staying muted, so you'll have the red dash across your microphone icon on the left-hand side. Um, if you're comfortable leaving your video on, that's great. We love seeing everybody. Uh, if you'd prefer not to, we understand too. Uh, some people are eating dinner right now, so I can understand if you wanna keep the camera off. Um, we'll be using the chat function for any comments or questions when we get to that portion. Um, and we'll ask you if you, when we get to a conversation portion, we're gonna use the raise hand feature for some of this. Um, and if you're having any connectivity issues, you can call in at 929-436-2866. And the meeting ID is 874-1117-3567. And so how can you participate? Um, some guidelines for tonight's meeting. If you wanna ask any questions by microphone, just use the raise hand button at the bottom of the screen. Um, we'll be moderating this and we'll unmute the participants in the order that they raise their hands. Um, when we get to the conversation portion of the meeting. Uh, if you're calling in, you can press star nine to raise your hand and we'll read the last four digits of your phone number when it's time for you to speak. Uh, we wanna give as many people as possible a chance to be heard. Um, so if you've already had a chance to speak, let someone else step forward. Um, if you wanna say something but it's already been said already, maybe let the next person go, but we wanna try to keep the comments to a couple minutes apiece, um, if we can, just to make sure that we get, everyone has an opportunity to talk that wants to. Um, and if we're not able to get to your questions by seven o'clock, feel free to call me or email me. Again, I'm Drew Kane, uh, land use planner at CDD. Um, and my number is there on the screen, 617-349-4640. Uh, and you can also email me at dkane at cambridge, cambridgema.gov. Um, and anything that we put in the chat tonight will become meeting record. And so we're gonna use that both as our own internal kind of note-taking source. Um, and we'll, you know, it helps us to begin in our, in our report out process to have some of that information on hand. And we're happy to have a guest with us tonight. I'm gonna to introduce Stephanie. This is the first time that we've been able to use closed captioning um, and have live transcripts. So Stephanie, if you wanna give folks an idea of how to use it, um, if they'd like to, that would be great. Hi, good evening, everybody. Um, for anybody who wants to use closed caption on the bottom of your screen, you should see a CC button and you click on CC and then show subtitles, or you can also view full transcript, which will bring up the text on the right-hand side of your box. Um, I'm also going to post a separate streaming link in the chat box right now that you can use if you prefer to have the entire text. Um, it would bring up a separate window um, next to your Zoom window. So that should do it. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Stephanie. We appreciate no your help. No problem. So welcome. We'd love for you to sign in. So. At this point, if you wanted to go into the chat um, and add your contact, that would be great. And we're also dropping a link in there to a Google form 
um, with the kind of more formal um, sign-in sheet. So um, if you could click on that link, um, that would be helpful too. I'll just give you guys a little bit of time to do that. Um, in the meantime, I can introduce myself. Hi, everyone. Yeah. Um, I'm Ashley DeCaro. I work at a firm called Interface Studio. Uh, we're really happy to be here tonight, and we're so glad that there's so many people um, turning out to talk about a vision for Cambridge Street. Um, I'm here with my colleagues, Stacey Chen and Tobin Stuff. Um, they're going to be helping behind the scenes with the um, logistics of tonight's meeting. Uh, we're really excited to get started. Um, when we were talking about this visioning session with Drew and, and how to kind of conduct it, we really wanted something that was a little more interactive. Um, unfortunately, you know, the reality is that we're still on Zoom and not in person. We would love to do this meeting in person with all of you and have a real, you know, in-person discussion. But um, we've decided to try something a little bit new tonight with all of you. Um, so I hope that you um, bear with us and, and find this engaging. Um, anytime that there's any kind of technology issue, um, say so in the chat, raise your hand. We, we want to go slow. We want everyone to um, engage with the software. If you um, are having issues, do not want to touch any of the, the technology piece of this, just raise your hand and you're welcome to speak. Um, or also, you know, drop your notes in the chat and we'll get them into the interactive piece of this presentation. But um, that is to say, we're really excited and we hope this is fun and engaging and um, let's go on. So um, that was a preamble for what we're using tonight, which is a program called Mentimeter. Um, we are going to receive your feedback this way and, and then have a discussion around those notes. Um, and the way this works is that you have um, your smartphone handy or a different browser or a, a link in the chat. So if anyone wants to pull out their smartphone right now, um, you can also go to menti.com on, on your website and type in the code 76455952. Um, you should be able to see this screen in real time on, on whatever device you're using. So if you're just at your computer, click on the link menti.com and type in the code. Or if you wanna use your phone so that you can still see the Zoom part of this um, and have another device handy, that works too. Um, but essentially, um, once everyone sees this screen, I'm gonna advance the slide. A meeting about Cambridge Street. Hello. <laughs> so now you all on whatever, um, on that link, um, you should be following along live with me. I hope so. If not, let us know in the chat and we can help troubleshoot. Um, but the very first question is a warm up. What is your favorite thing to eat from Cambridge Street? And whatever you type into um, that input form is going to appear up here live on this screen. Um, so it's a way for all of you to provide input. Um, for those of you that are shy like me, Surprisingly, um, I love to kind of just add things in the chat, but this way things won't get hidden in the chat. They'll appear on our screen and we can talk about them. Some great answers. Um, Stacey or Tobin, are there any troubleshooting things in the chat that we need to be aware of before we keep going with this? I just want to pause here to make sure everyone feels comfortable with the software. I think. So far, so good. Someone did ask what the code is. And so if you haven't found the code, it's, all, it's on your screen and it's also in the chat, 76455952. But again, if you're not able to use the Mentimeter, you can just type your responses in the chat. Yeah, we do have someone in the back end of the chat um, mining answers and we'll add them to our Mentimeter on the screen if you don't feel comfortable using it. So it's no problem. Um, we don't want this to be a, a barrier to participation, just a fun way to kind of talk about things. I think this should be a food guide for Cambridge Street. For <laughs> We're gonna post this online on our website and it's gonna be, you know, the public's food guide to Cambridge Street. This is great. I love rosemary fries. That one's standing out to me. Okay, this is great. All right, I'm going to move on to the next one. Um, so when I ever, whenever I move my screen, if you haven't submitted your answer yet, there's going to be a little window that pops up on your Mentimeter screen that says, the presenter has advanced their slide. Um, would you like to continue or, or not? That means you haven't submitted your answer. So anytime you put something in the Mentimeter, make sure you hit submit so that it records your answer. 
Um, and then you can click, you know, the green button at the top. Oh, this to is so complicated. Um, and I can't, I can't see the presenter, so I don't know who's speaking. Um, but um, if it's too complicated, please just add your answers to the chat. Um, this next question, we are really curious about polling the room to see um, who has joined us previously and who is new to this process. Um, and it looks like we're split and I'm so glad to see some new people here. Um, it's okay if you haven't been um, to a meeting previously, um, we really do encourage participation from as many people as possible um, throughout this process. Um, all right, we're about even. I'm just gonna go to the next slide. Um, and again, any issues in the future with any of the questions I pose, just let us know and, and we'll, we'll do some troubleshooting. Uh, we're all in this together. Um, and since we have so many um, new folks in the room, um, it's no problem that you're just jumping in. This is an open public process and we're grateful um, for any of you that can lend time to it. Um, just a little bit about us again. My name is Ashley DeCaro. Um, I'm from a firm called Interface Studio. We are a planning and urban design firm out of Philadelphia. Um, we do have a much larger team. Uh, we have Ninigret Partners and Consult Econ. Both of those are, are more local to um, your area. Uh, one focusing on economic development and economic strategy and the other really looking at the real estate market and housing for us. And then finally, we have an engineering firm on our team as well, uh, Borough Happold, that are looking at mobility issues and, and climate resiliency. And um, as Drew mentioned tonight, um, it's gonna be a little bit different than our last meeting. Um, last time we presented a bunch of slides to you um, about some of the things that we were learning about the corridor and all of the challenges kind of that were popping up in our data analysis. Um, but tonight we were is the first of two uh, public workshops, and we're really here to talk about a vision for Cambridge Street. Um, we want to kind of work through the, those vision statements with you um, as a public, um, and then and then we're going to go through next steps. I'm going to hand it back over to Drew just to talk about our process so far. Sure. Thanks, Ashley. So here we are, thanks folks. Um, a little bit of a project update for those that have been able to follow along with us since this fall. And if this is your first meeting, I'll give you a little bit of a snapshot of where we are. And there's also plenty of resources online that I can point you to if you feel like you wanna get caught up some more. But we're about five months into what will be almost a year long process. Um, looking at Cambridge Street, we started this fall with the, what do we would call learning and analysis. And that was a lot of sort of heavy data analysis that the firm did behind the scenes. And then we did a lot of on the street activities and sort of more you know, traditional public engagement methods. Um, but here we are in February with these two workshops um, and we've got some time to go obviously. So we have a few more community engagement opportunities um, virtually and then we'll also be doing some more on the street activities in the spring. Um, but this gives you a general timeline of where we are in the process right now. And we went over the slide last time, or rather the challenges last time. Um, so I won't belabor this too much. We'd love for you to go to the website though to view our last presentation. So if you go to cambridgema.gov forward slash Cambridge Street, our presentation from December is on there where we discuss really a lot of the challenges that we're facing on Cambridge Street, which aren't just logistics. It's not just about transportation. It's not just about you know loading and parking and everything that we see on the street day to day. It's also about tree cover and canopy. It's about making space for pedestrians on sidewalks, um, looking at external development pressures, et cetera. So there's a whole host of issues of which we kind of reviewed in our presentation in December. So I really encourage you to go back and look at that if you can. Um, and of course, these are gonna be issues that will be coming up throughout the course of this process. But I think that, um, that presentation gives a pretty good snapshot of, of what we went over last time. Oh, and here are some photos <laughs> from some of our events. Um, some of the pop-ups we did in Inman Square, East Cambridge, um, early on the Volpe Block Party, we took some space from the East Cambridge Business Association. They let us sort of crash the party uh, and set up some information um, opportunities for folks there. And just a quick snapshot of engagement by the numbers. So 
as of January 2022, as of a few days ago, um, early in the process in the fall, we did a few dozen interviews, and those were with businesses on the street or community organizations that have a front door on Cambridge Street um, and other neighborhood organizations. So we had opportunities to speak with social service providers, the housing authority, um, schools, East Cambridge Business Association, in the Square Neighborhood Association, East Cambridge Planning Team, the list goes on. Um, so we did have a really good opportunity to have a few dozen interviews one-on-one -on -one with folks. Um, we did a site tour with East Cambridge Business Association where we took the team up and down the street for half a day and were able to stop in and do some one-on-one -on -one interviews with some of the businesses, which was immensely helpful for our team as we kind of really dug our teeth into um, the actual physical landscape of Cambridge Street. Um, we've done a few pop-ins, what we're calling is a bulky block party. We went to Miller's River Housing and had a really nice morning session with them in the fall, um, as well as latching onto the Inman Square holiday stroll. Um, you might have seen us across from the Llamas. They had a petting zoo in December, so we were we were parked there as well. Um, and the pop-ups that, pop that we did, we had our first big event in Inman Square. That was in November and did it again in East Cambridge, and that's where we just kind of stood outside had some activities and invited folks to come and talk with us about sort of what they feel the oppression issue, issues are on Cambridge Street. And also we wanted to know why they love it, what it means to them. Um, our last online meeting, we had about a hundred attendees, which was excellent. We're really excited about that. We've had over 600 responses to our survey and that's both from residents, visitors, workers, business owners, you name it has weighed in, uh, which has been excellent to get such a kind of a well-rounded response from people. Um, and our constant contact email has been a success. We have, it goes out to about 1,600 people, and we're still trying to grow that list. Um, so if you'd like to be added to the email list, if you want to drop your email in the chat, that would be great. And we can add you to that um, email list. So you'll be getting updates from us every few weeks about the state of the project and what upcoming meetings there might be and what other information you can be looking out for. I'm going to take it back from here. Um, we're going to be asking you for your input tonight. So I thought it was important to share with you some of what we've talked about so far and who we've talked to and how we use this input just to set the stage. Um, this graph shows the age of participants across all of our engagement touch points so far. Um, you can see that about half of the participants are within that 25 to 44 year old range. Um, and graphs like, like this really help us to um, expand our engagement efforts to see where we're lacking in participation and to make sure we're hearing from um, a diverse range of voices. Um, so um, here you can see that maybe we need to do a better job of, of reaching seniors. Um, that kind of the graph falls a little bit off, the, off to the end. Um, Drew and Lev had an event just for Millers River residents um, earlier when it was warmer out and they'll be looking forward to hooking back up with them when it's warmer out again. Um, and so we just wanna tell all of you that we are keeping track of who we're talking to, looking for where the holes are and, and really trying to round this out a little bit more um, and just be transparent about it. Um, the same goes for race and ethnicity. Um, so much of this work and so much what you've been hearing about Cambridge Street is how diverse it is and, and how multicultural it is. So we do wanna make sure that we are trying our best to reach as many different um, folks as possible. Um, in terms of race in 2019, about 62% of residents were white. When you just look at the air, this area, we went over the demographics in our, our last presentation. Um, but you can see that white residents um, and participants make up 85% of our participation. Um, so that means we need to do a little bit better job of trying to reach more diverse folks. Um, this also underscores um, the connections um, that we need to make. And so, um, you know, this is an open process. If all of you can help us um, spread the word about this process, if there are different groups that we should talk to or reach out to to make sure we're hearing from a diverse range of voices, um, please do reach out to Drew or I um, to make those connections for us. Um, one of the important things that we've heard from the last couple of meetings, um, people are always asking like, who are these people that we're talking to? Do they live here? All of those things. Um, I just wanna you know, also set the stage that we are um, asking that question at all of these touch points as well. It was in our, our original um, sign-in sheet tonight. Um, in all of our meetings, um, if you look at kind of the left side of this graph, um, over 80% of folks identified as living on or near Cambridge Street in, in our in-person meetings and online. 
Um, the survey results show a little bit lower percentage of having a direct relationship to Cambridge Street. Um, and while business owners only represent a small proportion on this graph, we heard directly from at least 50 businesses on the corridor so far, which is a pretty great number in our line of work. Um, we are doing continued outreach with businesses on the street um, to make sure that their voices are incorporated as well. Um, and we also have been asking, you know, how you, what is your mode of tran transport or mobility on, on the street? Um, most people we heard from are pedestrians on the corridor, or at least they identified that as the main kind of mode of travel that they walk around. We've also heard from other modes, an equal split almost, of uh, those who prelim preliminary, uh, primarily drive or, um, or walk, I'm sorry, preliminary drive or bike on the corridor, um, and then also those who take transit. And why does all of that matter? Again, um, when we're having an open discussion like we're about to tonight, um, I do wanna make sure um, to let all of you know that we are trying to hear from a very diverse range of voices. We know that there's a lot of differing opinions of, of the future of the street. And so when we're talking about a future vision, we wanna make sure that we understand who was giving this, this input and, and how you know, that affects the outcome. Um, and so this is interesting. This is uh, specifically from one of the survey questions that we asked. Um, which is what do you think the most important priorities are for the street? Um, and so all of the responses, all 600 and whatever that number was that Drew said, um, um, these are kind of the top three, three and four are tied. So it's, it's really the top four um, across all of our respondents. Um, what are the priorities for the street? And so making it easier and safer to bike came up as number one. Um, increasing tree cover and green space, um, improving the pedestrian experience and including mobility aid, um, and then also supporting our local businesses and economic growth. Um, and where all this comes together is that because we've been doing you know, our questions this way, uh, we're actually able to break out that data and take a more nuanced look at this information um, by how you identify as your relationship to the street and by your mode of travel. Um, what I find the most interesting here is when you look at all of this, um, everything that's starred is actually where different, these different user groups or these different um, relationships to the street. Um, there's a lot of alignment in what people like to see um, in the corridor. And so um, where there's a little bit of split are these um, kind of dashed lines where there aren't stars. Um, we can see a little bit of a pattern and then this are kind of also reinforces some of the conversations we've been having um, with those who are working on the corridor or driving on the corridor that they don't necessarily support as much as the bicycle infrastructure or safety, um, but really are looking towards um, supporting businesses and economic growth. And I also just wanted to flag that we've received a lot of um, feedback and comments and ideas um, that are tied to specific parts and places of this street. And that's really important to us as well. Um, some positive insights shown here are in these kind of hot spots. So we took all of those comments and put them into a software that kind of aggregated them by, by heat or, or the number of comments of, of places. Um, so we can start to see trends across all of these different conversations that we're having. Um, these are just the positive insights of, places that people love or things that they wanna reinforce um, across the corridor. The flip side of that, some issues or um, challenges that were flagged, uh, many relating to the design of the street itself, safety for walking, especially crossing the street as well as bicycling. And finally, lots of ideas for improvement. Uh, we are tracking this information to help us form a set of recommendations, which we'll bring back to you for review in the next round of engagements. But um, all that is to say, I really just wanted to share, like you've given us a lot of feedback, as Drew mentioned, that whole list of engagement. And um, tonight you're gonna be giving us more and we really are listening and um, we'll be incorporating that as we get to kind of what the ideas are for the street. I did wanna flag that we um, did close the survey at the end of last year. Um, we have since received some feedback from residents or some residents that they'd like another chance to take it. Um, so we have reopened the survey just to make one last push during these next two workshops. So if you haven't already taken our survey, um, it only takes about 15 minutes. Um, it'll be open until February 20th. Um, and so we'd like to kind of just 
again, do one last push. If anyone hasn't had the chance to take it, um, there should be a link in the chat. You can snap a photo of this QR code as well. Um, but we do wanna make sure anyone who wants to have a voice in this process does. So, so please feel free to take the survey um, and spread the word. Okay, on to the meat of the presentation. Um, I'm gonna transition now onto why we're here tonight um, so that all of you have a chance to provide some input on a shared vision for this project and this corridor. Um, we don't want this to be, you know, Ashley from Philadelphia's vision for, for Cambridge Street. That's not, that's not what the purpose of this project is. Um, we really wanna have a public discussion about the street and what we look towards for in the future. Um, one thing that came out of the last meeting, um, which was a really great comment, was a sense that it's important to recognize the differences from block to block through the different neighborhoods along Cambridge Street and that there are, you know, nodes um, as you go. It's not one, one, you know, I guess it is one street, but it's, <laughs> it has different character along the way. Um, and so tonight I'm referring to a single vision, but we are keeping that note in mind. Um, that this is an overarching vision for Cambridge Street that may be applied differently um, to our goals and across the corridor to make sure we retain that kind of dynamic place and really kind of recognizing it as it is um, and all of the differences that are along it. So um, we are talking about a shared vision, you know, for the corridor, but I also wanted to just flag that we do understand that it is different along the way and we should celebrate that. Um, and just one quick note um, of why, what is a vision statement? Why are we doing this tonight? Um, this is an example from Envision Cambridge, which is the overall, um, the overall document that kind of guides the future for all of Cambridge. Um, but really we wanna make sure that we have a chance to have just an open dialogue about the vision of the future Cambridge Street um, a statement that everyone can agree with, can agree on at least. Um, maybe the different tactics of how we get there, um, we can have some some discussion or some differences on. But to have an overarching vision that we're all pointing to, that we all agree on, is really important for this kind of a process, um, particularly when there are some opposing opinions um, across the neighborhood. Um, Okay, so I'm gonna pause here. Um, we're gonna go back to now the activity portion of this. I'm sorry, there was a bunch of slides there. I promised there wouldn't be too many, but um, we really did wanna have just a discussion tonight um, to really set the stage for all of the kind of next steps of like, how do we get there? How do we transform Cambridge Street? How do we preserve the things that we want to in the future? Um, so the very first one we had asked this and when we were on, this, on the street, um, this fall, I think it was in November, um, we had a, a little poster board and some of you may have participated in this quick exercise, but essentially we asked three questions. Um, so first we want you to kind of close your eyes and imagine your ideal Cambridge Street in the future. Um, I'm just gonna make the space to say we're back at menti.com. If you can go back to that link, Tobin, if you could drop that in the chat again, the code is still the same. Um, so the first question, this should just pop up automatically on your screen. Um, is to close your eyes, imagine your ideal Cambridge Street. What are you doing is, is the first thing. Think about the things that you could. We're looking for short phrases here. Um, you're also welcome to raise your hand if you'd like to speak to this question. Um, and throughout the rest of this presentation, feel free to raise your hand and you can kind of share your thoughts. We'd like to have some discussion about these answers, but also give you all the opportunity to add your thoughts individually. Um, I see a lot of walking with my, I will say that, the, you know, I was first stricken by um, the amount of families that we talked to when we were on Cambridge Street um, that, first, that first time when the weather was a little bit warmer. So it's glad to see some of that sentiment here. I think Phyllis has her hand raised. Oh, sure. Can you unmute her? Yeah. Should be able, able to unmute. You should be able to unmute. There you go. Um, it, 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 can I talk? Can yeah, you hear me? Okay, two, two things before I continue. Mm -hmm. There's a tremendous echo. Can that be, and, and everything I say is being repeated and everything that, that Drew and Ashley have said is being repeated. Hmm. Um, that might mean you have two windows up somehow. 
Um, okay, I'll try. I'll try to look into that. But the other your, thing is, everything is your, moving so fast that it's hard. Two of us have commented in the chat. To please just slow down a little. Thank you for that feedback. I will. Okay, but but the point I really wanted to make is that I see how much support there is for the biking lanes, and the bikers. Mm -hmm. My biggest concern is that bikers in general do not patronize the business. They go whipping through at I breakneck speed. I live in Inman Square, literally in the square. And I watch people flying by and they are not stopping. These are commuter um, trails that people use. And so all of the support for biking, and I'm a biker, but I don't, I don't commute. I, I use my bike to go shopping, to visit friends. So um, I'm really concerned that number one kept coming up as concern for biking and the bikers in general do not patronize our businesses. And that's a huge concern for me because I want our businesses to thrive. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Phyllis. Um, I do want to mention that the second workshop, the one on February 17th, we will be diving in to different needs on the street and, and balancing those needs, particularly when it comes to cyclists. So um, tonight we really want to focus on the vision for the corridor and, and, and a shared vision okay. statement. Um, so if we could reserve all of those kinds of comments for next, next meeting, which is on February 17th. Um, we actually have some experts coming. Um, I mentioned that we have some engineers on our team, but they're going to be doing um, specifically a, a mobility portion of the presentation. And we have folks from the city that can help answer some questions about certain things like cycling. So um, thank you so much for that comment. But um, let's tonight try to focus on, on our future of what we want to see on the corridor. I have um, a couple more folks with their hands raised. There's O.R. Simha's next. Yeah. Let me. Can you unmute yourself? There I want to, I want to reinforce what Ms. Burke said. The, the speed with our uh, speaking makes it almost impossible to understand what you are trying to get from us. Uh, it, you are very young and uh, Cannot play a that the people who you participate are not computer. Uh, the tech you're using uh, will off, so you need to slow down uh, and also uh, understand what the rate of uh, uh, absorption can be. Uh, the kind of material you're trying to get from. Uh, the uh, the other thing the point that you are in sensitive categories which are necessarily sensitive to what Cambridge Street has been uh, asked and what it is today what it could be in the future uh, you have not you've asked racial rather than national stories this is a that uh, was populated and it populated today by many ethnic groups, uh, Italian, old, Portuguese, Lithuanian, um, Jewish, uh, uh, and you uh, um. not reflect any of those uh, the population. And the yeah, I'm gonna. Um, um, unfortunately, your your audio is is not working so well. Um, if you can add your comment to the chat, I think that might be more helpful. Okay. Um, but I, I do hear you on, I apologize for going so quickly through those slides. I really just wanted to make the most time to have this discussion, but I will go much slower. Thank you for that feedback. An hour. So. Um, next we have Tony Preston. Yes. Um, there you go. Hi. 
Uh, I've lived in this area since 1995. And one of the things that makes this area special is the fact of uh, its diversity mm -hmm. and its, uh, um, what I want to, ethnicity, meaning that, you know, we have Brazilian families, we have Portuguese families, we have Haitian families, and mm -hmm. all of it comes together in celebrations. You see it in our in the churches here, okay? You see it in uh, festivals here. And what I'm seeing now, and I know you want to talk about the vision, but I think that what I'm visioning now is something that is very white, non-diverse, okay, uh, very um, middle, upper middle class, student-y type of vision that you have created here or a foundation for a vision that you have created here. You're losing what Cambridge Street was about. One of the things that I loved about Cambridge Street is I did not have to leave my neighborhood in order to get services, whether it was to get my hair done, mm -hmm. whether it was to get a manicure, whether it was to go to a restaurant to eat, whether it was to go out to get a drink, whether it was to take my kids to the playground. Okay, and yeah. we're losing that. And what I see as priorities are bicycling. Bicyclers who come through this corridor, they do not stop in this corridor. They're getting from one end of town to the other. Mm -hmm. If you want to know what is, you know, a, a, a priority is traffic. All right. And that doesn't mean making it wider so that bikes can get through. But how do we manage the traffic in this area? All right. I and I agree, we need more parks, that type of thing. But what I'm seeing here is leaving out the heart of a community. That's what I see. Thank you. I think that was, I changed the slide because I think that's a great segue. Um, the next one is, is you know, who is the future Cambridge Street supposed to be for? And so I hear you that, you know, we want to, to really work towards preserving that diversity and, and bringing it into the future. Um, but these types of questions can really help to draw that out. So um, thank you so much for sharing that. Thank you. Next up. Richard. Um, uh, yes, I'm a member of the Inman Square Neighborhood Association and the Cambridge Residents Alliance, and uh, uh, I'm very concerned uh, about the uh, businesses in Inman Square uh, and along the to lesser, because that's where I live, but also to some extent along the uh, Eastern Cambridge Corridor there. My vision uh, is that uh, a lot of uh, one and two story development gets uh, built up to four in the case of uh, residential property that includes affordable housing up to five stories. Uh, I would like to see it not go any higher than that personally, because uh, I think that creates the best balance uh, of residential and small uh, commercial activity. Mm -hmm. uh, but there has to be more housing and more affordable housing along the corridor to strengthen the business districts there because they're suffering so much from the comp new, new competition from Kendall Square and impending competition uh, from uh, Union Square. Um, and so I think that's very important to create a, a healthy balance that will nurture our small businesses along Cambridge Street as well as uh, um, uh, 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 provide more affordable housing. And um, I think that the city will have to spend more money to subsidize affordable housing mm -hmm. because you can't build much affordable housing on the budget we have if half of your total development cost is just the land cost. Uh, yeah. And somehow we will have to do a counter to what's happening in the whole city, which is the city is moving from a diverse city 
to more of a, a homogeneous city of young upper income uh, professionals. And if we want to preserve the unity of uh, this diversity of the city, which uh, Tony and Phyllis and others are so concerned about, as am I, it's going to take some restrictions on commercial development and a lot more subsidy for affordable housing. Thanks, Richard. I, um, I also like Phyllis's comment. Um, on the 17th, we're having a workshop um, that gets more into those topical issues. So one of them mm -hmm. is, is the mobility and, and the cycling ordinance, and another one is affordable housing. Um, so we have another conversation really scheduled around those mm -hmm. topics. Um, yeah. I, I kind of want to refocus us back to these, like, what are we working towards types of conversations. Um, but thank you so much for that comment and make sure you come on the 17th to have a more in-depth discussion about the affordable housing piece of this. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to go to the next slide before we um, hear from Betty, just so that um, we can keep kind of the questions going. The last piece of this section is, um, again, you know, the ideal Cambridge Street. Um, we already talked about what are you doing and who are you with, but we also want to know what it feels like to be in this future place. Um, safe, happy, comfortable. That's great. Um, Betty, would you like to go next? You should be able to unmute. Yes, um, this is Marie. Uh, I'm Betty's sister. We're both using the same computer this evening. Um, we are fourth generation East Cambridge. I was kind of taken aback at the presentation the last time when you introduced the different ethnic groups that you perceived in the last 10 years, when in fact, this was really a Mecca for Polish, Irish, Italian, and Portuguese for over a hundred years. Um, I do agree with Tony Preston and with Phyllis and Bob Simha uh -huh. that, um, you know, you seem to be concentrating on the, the younger, um, more professional, more homogeneous group. And they're probably the people taking your um, survey. Uh, I had, I started to take the survey and then I stopped because it's a survey where you can only pick one answer. You can't pick two. And I thought, what is this? I mean, I work here and I live here. So I should be able to check off two boxes. Um, I would like, I mean, if I go back in time to the optimum Cambridge Street, I could walk to anything. We had a vegetable store. We had a meat market, more than probably three meat markets. We had a bread store. Uh, which was Italian, but we also had the Portuguese bread store. We had the Balkan bread store. Um, it, anything you wanted could have been had on Cambridge Street. That's not the way Cambridge Street is set up today. Um, I agree with the, the uh, prior comments about the cyclists. Um, I was one of them interviewed on Cambridge Street um, when they had that pop-up, um, whatever it was. And I was asked, well, do you walk up? Do you, how, how do you, you know, get to Cambridge Street? Well, of course I walk, I'm a block away. But if I have to go to Inman Square and shop, I'm gonna take my car. I'm not gonna walk up to Inman Square from Third Street and then walk back with heavy bundles. Um, I see very little accommodation to seniors here. You talked about Miller's River. We're seniors who live independently in our own homes. There's loads of us in the neighborhood, but I haven't seen any outreach at all. The only outreach I got was a flyer and it wasn't from you folks. So your outreach, I mean, with all due respect, I realize you have a very difficult job and you're not even from the area, but you know, you're kind of put into a really hot uh, issue here between yep. the cyclists, the new techies, um, the, the, the way the townies are treated, um, even you reframing our history. I mean, you put ethnic groups up there that I don't even know exist in East Cambridge. So yeah. that's, you know, I want to participate. Trust me, I want to participate. Um, oh, and thank you for joining us tonight. Kind of a, it's, a, it's a weird format and it's, it's not appropriate for a lot of people who live in East Cambridge. And I'd like to talk afterwards. 
Um, maybe I can have Stacy address the um, the data portion of the. Yeah, if I could, I would just like to make a clarification with regard to the demographic data that talked about. Yeah, I know who lives in Cambridge. Who right, lives in I Cambridge think you went back like ten years. Yeah, but it, it kind of it kind of nullified the prior hundred years and the fact that wasn't people the who've purpose. been here for four generations. Sure. And that's not the purpose to nullify. Um, I think, you know- But that is what you did. Uh, we're sorry if we did that. We're just, the point of that information was to show that this is a place that has been and has continued to be a place that is welcoming to immigrants and that there are new immigrants that are coming into the sea and into the Cambridge Street area and that it continues to be a welcoming place for immigrants, but that the countries of origins of those immigrants has changed over time. That's all that that was meant to show. And just a, um, that data is always a little bit flawed. It's from the US census. So it's kind of the best snapshot we can get to kind of illustrate that point. Um, but we have certainly heard of the, the different ethnicities over time um, in the history of the corridor. So I'm sorry that there was a misunderstanding there. Um, and then I just also like to have um, or maybe we can talk about it at the, at the end, um, the way that we're dispersing this information. Um, we are hoping that as many people as possible um, hear about this process and we're, glad, we're trying to do our best to get the word out. Um, the city is really spearheading the, the outreach part of this. And so um, we can have maybe Drew address that at the end of, of ways that yeah, we can spread the word. Um, but I do wanna maybe just kind of move us along through these different activities. Um, I love all of the words here, safe, happy, home, relaxed, um, excited. Um, these are the kind of things that we'd like to work for, work towards, you know, when we're thinking about the future of Cambridge Street. The next step is to figuring out um, how do we do that? You know, how do we make sure it remains a diverse place? How do we make sure that it feels safe and happy and like home? Um, these are really important to us as we move forward. So thank you for sharing. Um, the next portion of this um, is an exercise that we like to do called What Are We For? Um, we've already kind of heard this tonight that there's a lot of um, things that people may be against. You know, they may be against a certain um, way that the street may be designed in the future or a mode of transportation, but we want to know really the positive things. What are we working towards? What is this community for? And this is the place to really get those things. Um, you know, solidified in a sense. And so um, this one's gonna pop up a little bit differently, but if you think about our future Cambridge Street, um, tell us what you're for, what do you wanna see in the future? Um, try to keep them positive. Um, we know a lot of what, what folks may be against, but I think it's really important to just outline what we're working towards in, in a positive way. So um, I see Tony shaking her head. <laughs> Tony, is there anything that, that you would like to see in the future that, that you would be for um, happening? I think, first of all, that we're not being negative. We're oh. just not, a, we're just not, a, we're just saying that there's other things you need to take into consideration. We're not being negative. We're pointing out some things that we think you need to take into consideration in regards to where you're going with this vision piece of it. We're not against anything. We want to see Cambridge Street improve, but we also want to make sure that everything is considered and included. We're not being racist. Sorry, whoever wrote that. That's not what racist is anyway, but that's a whole nother lesson. Okay, you need to open up your minds and just say, okay, let's look at this. And it's not positive and it's not negative. We're just saying, please take everything into consideration. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Tony. Thanks, Tony. Um, local independent retail, community, um, outdoor dining, small business, diversity and inclusion seems to be popping up. Opportunities for all, more affordable housing. This is great, guys. Thank you so much. Does anyone want to speak to this question before we move on to the next one?
Okay, I'm gonna jump. A lot of walking. <laughs> Bob, it's his hand raised, Ashley. Sure. Hi, Bob. You should be able to unmute. I, uh, Hi. One, I would urge you to uh, focus on is that the key to the quality that we are Can I ask you, um, sir, because your microphone is not working very well, do you want to try turning off your video and seeing if we can hear you better? It might be a... Uh, yeah, unfortunately, unfortunately, your mic keeps cutting in and out, Bob. And we so if you look on the side. bottom panel, there is on the far left, uh, stop video button. Okay, now I'll try and speak and see if that might help. Okay, well, I think one important thing to consider is the question. Uh, uh, I don't mean I don't mean popular version of being taught. Um, if you want to have uh, the quality retail is and the relationship between housing and retail you have to play uh the kind which already on and which have people during times bad times and if you sorry sir i think we're still having a hard time hearing you i'm really sorry could you try typing it into the chat and we'll have a record of it uh, okay uh, Sorry, I know this is a virtual meeting is is so not ideal in so many ways, but hopefully, you know, we can we can capture your comments through the chat. Yeah, it's difficult to do a vision session like this virtually, but we're trying to make the best we can <laughs> of the situation. So thanks everyone's patience uh, as we work through this. Um, like Ashley Floor, you know, said right right now, we really want to know what sort of people can mutually, so you know, come together with and, and say, you know say what they're for, what they want Cambridge Street to be, what it is already that they love, um, and want to retain. So we'll, we'll go through some of those questions as well. But thanks everyone for being patient uh, in this process. I know it gets a little tricky. Couple on climate resiliency. Um, lots of lots of talk about the small businesses, um, which I think is very consistent with a lot of the conversations we've been having to date. So it's good to see those things reinforced. All right, I'm going to keep us going. Um, I will say that if you have some time to think about this, uh, we do have a form we can drop the link to. Um, at the end of this presentation. Um, if you'd like to add answers in the future, um, we're gonna leave this open for a little while if you wanted to um, keep thinking about it. Yep. Um, Richard has a raised hand as well. Oh, sure. Hi, Richard. Oops. You're muted, oh. Richard. <clears throat> in today's meeting, is there a place in the agenda uh, to talk about uh, impediments to realizing this vision? Not quite yet. Um, I think that we really wanted to keep this conversation um, more broad, you know? Um, again, right. the, the next step is to figure out how we get there, but let's, you know, let's table that until round three uh, when we have some ideas for you to react to. So the next round of engagement is really thinking about the strategies to achieve the vision but first we need to, to, to see what we're working towards. So that was kind of where we wanted to go tonight. Um, so there's gonna be, you know, trade-offs um, for lots of different proposals and ideas, you know, that we'll have to sift through the strategies, but right now we're just working towards that, that vision statement. Um, the last set of questions um, are more of like a Mad Lib. They're gonna be just kind of one word answers again um, and a fill in the blank. Um, and so they're pretty, they're designed to be pretty quick. Um, and I think that this speaks to some of the comments we heard tonight about um, preserving or retaining the good things about Cambridge Street and the history that, that exists here. Um, and how do we bring those things out? So um, as our Cambridge Street evolves in the future, it will retain what, uh, what would you like to see it retain in the future? Diversity, character, small businesses affordability. And 
actually Betty has raised her hand. Oh, sure. Hi, Betty. You should be able to unmute. Hey, it's Marie again. Oh, hi, Marie. Um, one real impediment. I mean, obviously, we all want to preserve and foster the small businesses and assure that the, the you know the rent is affordable. Mm -hmm. um, what we've engaged uh, pretty much in the last year, we've learned that three significant buildings on Cambridge Street, um, Emmons Square down here, um, have been converted to labs um, covertly. The zoning has supposedly allowed it, but you won't get a small business that can compete with that kind of rent for square footage. What we're trying to do is keep the business um, zoning for business, not for labs. Um, so I see uh, labs actually one of the biggest threats to Cambridge Street and its, its viability in the future. Thanks, Betty. And those are exactly the sort of things we want to talk about in our next meeting. Um, so I appreciate you bringing up some of the issues now. We'll definitely have a chance in the 17th to dig into some of those issues around land uses and, and zoning and economic development. But I'm glad that people are talking about them now as well. Admittedly, we will, there was a talk of having one very long two hour meeting <laughs> to talk about the vision and all of these other issues, but we thought it was way too much to handle in one meeting. So we split them into two. Um, we really do hope you'll come on the 17th. Um, it will be a less of an interactive type of presentation and more discussion around those kinds of hot topics. Yeah, and I think that this is an important conversation to have. I know that you know the folks that are here with us tonight, so many of the people are really dedicated residents um, mm -hmm. in the Cambridge Street communities in the neighborhoods that about Cambridge Street. Um, and everyone's exceptionally invested in the neighborhood and on Cambridge Street, which is incredible. And so I think what for me is a nice opportunity tonight is to sort of come together and see what it is that we support, you know, what, what we're for. Um, and then when, you know, in a couple of weeks when we get an opportunity to say, okay, what are some of the issues we're challenging? What are some of the priorities we need to, you know, address and how can we get there? Um, so like Ashley said, that would have been way too much for us to try to tackle in one evening, especially doing it virtually. So this is, you know, we felt a good opportunity just to be able to get some expressions and words out there about how we feel about Cambridge Street and, and where we want it to be in the next 10, 20, 30 years or more. Christopher, Christopher has his hand raised. Yeah. Go ahead, Chris. Hey there, everyone. I just wanted to say hi to all of my neighbors and friends on the call. Uh, and just say, I am a person who predominantly gets around by walking and by bike. And I'm a human being who does feel threatened on Cambridge Street a lot and that it is really tough to do it. I, I don't want any changes to, for my safety to be at the expense of everybody else. I'm a person who predominantly shops along the corridor. I do you definitely see me at Elmendorf and uh, PT pies before and all the, the neighborhood restaurants and stuff. And so I just, I want to be respectful of one another and that we have a tone about younger student D professional as, you know, kind of avoiding these code words for people who are just not exactly what we do. I respect everybody who's a senior's right to, to be able to drive when they need to. Um, you know, I just want us to all be talking in the same direction and not, uh, you know, kind of attacking each other or saying that somebody doesn't belong here or all they do is drive through the neighborhood and they don't stop at the stores. It's not productive. And I think, you know, there are a lot of people that we don't all hear from because we're all in our own bubbles. And I hope we take a little opportunity to think about the, you know, the people who filled out these surveys and who came to these meetings, they're real people who are our neighbors too. And they, you know, they deserve to be heard. And I, I hope we all kind of approach this with that um, insight. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Uh, we only have a couple more of these, so we won't go them. I know we're we're on time a little bit. We're behind, but um, I think it's been a really great discussion tonight. So I'm just gonna keep going with these. Um, the next one the, for the fill in the blank is um, what will the future Cambridge Street support? Um, we've heard a lot tonight about our supporting our um, our small businesses and. Um, there it is again. <laughs> I would say, you know, um, in, my, in my opinion, I'm not, I'm not supposed to give it tonight, but, um, you know, the character of Cambridge Street is made up by all of those local and small businesses. It's such an important part of this 
of this corridor. And so it's good to see that float to the top as well. I haven't heard the, the corridor be called eccentric yet, but I do see how that would um, be described that way. I think that's a great word. Um, immigrants, a mix of uses I think is really important too. Pedestrians, cyclists, walking, trees. Students, education, I love this. Mm -hmm. This is really great, thank you. I'm just gonna give this one uh, maybe 30 more seconds and then we'll go on to the next one. All right, I'm gonna move on. Um, you can still submit your answer and then go on to the next slide. Um, the next one is create. So as our Cambridge Street evolves in the future, what will it create? Increased safety, no more traffic jams. Economic opportunity, I think, is a really important piece of this as well. Better sidewalk, new jobs, space for community, um, that's great. These are all wonderful. Thank you all for sharing. Um, I'm just going to flip to the next one. You'll still have a little time with the last one. Just as long as you hit submit, um, it'll still come, come in for us. Uh, the last one is improve. So as our Cambridge Street evolves um, in the future, what will it improve? Um, Retail opportunity, tree cover. There's a lot of talk about walking and the sidewalk condition on this corridor. Affordable housing. Um, I almost get a little bit dizzy watching these. <laughs> a little hypnotic. Again, we, you know, this is new, new software. Um, we did hear some feedback tonight that maybe it wasn't the best, but if you want to drop in the chat, if you liked it or hated it, um, I'd, I'd love to know the answer to that. Um, the next meeting on the 17th will not use this technology. Um, it will be a little bit more standard, but um, we did want to give it a try and yeah. have all of you, um, you know, see in real time what other people from your community are thinking. So thank you for, for hanging with us through this. Yeah, and I, I think that's right, actually, you know, generally in sort of an open house format when we can all be together, this is a great way where we can pin post-it notes up and see what each other is saying and have conversations around those. And so it's tough to get on that exact same, you know, wavelength uh, and feeling. So we wanted to try something at least allowed everyone to see what other people are thinking. Um, imagine as if you're walking by a poster board and these are the words you're reading that your friends and neighbors have left. Um, so we're trying to, you know, come up with some sort of facsimile of what it might be like in person. <laughs> and uh, it's been a hard two years to do that. And we wish we could be in person with everybody right now having these conversations. So thank you for bearing with us. Um, if there are other thoughts, um, or questions, uh, we've highlighted Drew's email here. Um, he's always open for a conversation and um, it's, um, if you wanna drop that in the chat too, dkane at cambridgema.gov. Yeah. And we'll be doing more, you know, as the weather warms up a little bit, getting out more and getting on the street more and hopefully having some more sort of you know, casual interactions and less necessarily kind of the online formal virtual meeting rooms, um, because I think that's what becomes most beneficial for us and for you is to be able to meet people um, person to person and have these conversations. And thank you to Shelly who just mentioned the schools. Um, we 
tried to be had a rain out this fall, <laughs> but we wanted to get back to that. We've been in touch with the schools and with Valenti Libraries, um, the manager of the library there and the Frizzoli Youth Center. So I'm hoping that in the spring we can get students involved and kids involved as well. We were going to try to set up at the um, the vaccination clinic, but then realized that was probably a bad idea because the lines were, there were more important things to be done at that point. Then. <laughs> so we didn't want to disrupt those operations, but uh, thank you for mentioning it, Shelly. We'll definitely be doing that um, in the next couple months. And so here we are. Um, I didn't really notice the slide, thank you. Um, and thank you, Tony, I appreciate that comment as well. Um, we will, I'm looking at the slide now, here we go. Yeah, so we have in two weeks, we'll have the, the second session, which we can begin talking about some of the priorities that have come up through these conversations and the surveys. And it'll be a more issue-based, topic-based conversation. Um, and we'll have folks from city staff there to answer your questions, people that are more experts in some of this content than I am. So you're burning questions about housing. We'll have folks there that can help you um, in transportation, housing, economic development, uh, we want that to be a resource for everybody so we can provide you with the best information we have. Um, and then that'll help us begin to explore what the possibilities are for Cambridge Street. Um, thanks for your comment, Bob. Um, so that'll be in two weeks. We'll send out some more reminders. So if you can please sign up for our mailing list um, on our website, cambridgema.gov forward slash Cambridge Street. Um, that's the best way to get information um, as far as getting out regular updates to you guys. But are there any additional questions before we have to say goodnight for the for the evening? Okay, and Ashley, should we give people an idea of how we'll be able to bring some of this content back to them at the next meeting? Yeah, um, so the idea is that we take all of this input tonight and for the next meeting, we'll have a draft vision for you to review. Um, our vision statements typically evolve throughout the course of a project, you know, and so um, it'll be a first stab at taking this input again so everyone can kind of look at it and say, yeah, that's kind of hitting the right notes. That's really, you know, what I think the future of Cambridge Street should be, or we're really missing this piece or scrap it and start over. Um, we really have an iterative process here. So the, the, the plan is to come back to you um, in two weeks with kind of a, a draft of taking all of this input and trying to um, smash it all together into one statement um, and then look at it as a community and say, yes, yes, no, maybe, you know, those types of things. So um, that'll be on the agenda for, for the 17th as well. Um, and just one more plug to take the online survey if you haven't um, quite yet. Um, it is open for just a few more weeks um, and we do want to hear from a great cross section of folks. So um, please, please do take that. Um, it's still open and there's still a chance. Oh, and lastly, um, to help us spread the word, uh, we did hear some feedback tonight that maybe we're not doing a great job getting the word out. Um, we are trying our best. So um, if you could tell your neighbors, word of mouth is, is generally the best way that we can reach the most people. So um, if you need you know, materials or um, you know, ways to get in touch, uh, we're open to, to trying new things and, and doing more outreach. So um, just let us know if there are ideas or if you could tell your neighbors, that would be really great. Uh, 17th at 6 o'clock. Thanks, everybody. Have a good night. Thank you. Okay, have a good night, everyone.